Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and lately people seem to really enjoy it when I do these long, comprehensive videos on a topic, so I'm going to go ahead and do that again for you guys today. I know normally I make my videos in the three to five minute range, but every now and then, maybe once a week or so, I love to crank these out, and they've been really popular so far. Now, I know some of you would like a normal video, but it's so much easier, and it cuts my render time, upload time down by hours on these longer videos to do it in this format, to where I just voice over and put pictures, and plus then you guys don't have to look at my butt. All right, so the topic of today is going to be a comprehensive discussion of how to boost testosterone levels without using anabolic steroids or testosterone directly. And I'm going to discuss the problems with every method and why none of them are particularly effective because a lot of naturals are asking, hey, what can I do to boost my testosterone levels? What can I do about this? And the reality is there's a very limited amount you can do. And it's because people don't understand the topic. So I'm going to break down the different methods, philosophies, concepts, and discuss the, the pros and cons of each one and the problems with them. All right, number one, it's going to be through supplementation. Now, a lot of times, a lot of anabolic steroids have been pushed over the counter and pro-hormones have been pushed as supplements and then they eventually get outlawed. But, but unfortunately for you guys, you're still using an anabolic steroid, just like Superdrol and all these other drugs that were out there. They eventually become outlawed and it's no different really from you using a steroid. And in most cases, most of the oral ones I've seen like that over the years are actually more dangerous and worse for you than injectable testosterone is. So it's an all around lose. Now you're seeing a lot of test boosters out there, everything from tribulus to DAA, which is diaspartic acid. Well, here's your problem with these things. No matter what sort of anecdote people report, they simply haven't held up in the scientific literature. Now I know diaspartic acid had some very biased research at one time showing uh, something like a 40% testosterone boost for people who are down in the normal range, these athletes. But there's some problems with that. First of all, for every study, that you find on something like diaspartic acid showing a boost in testosterone, there's at least one other study. So at least half the studies show no change, nothing at all. So if it's capable of doing this, it would be consistent in most or all of the studies. And it simply isn't. People are not seeing it in all the studies. There are studies that just do not show a boost. And the thing is, the ones that are showing a boost, we're talking about transient shifts. And you have to remember, all the data over the years has shown that transient fluctuations in anabolic hormones in the body, like testosterone growth hormone things like that that just spike for part of the day don't ever seem to correlate with gains in muscle mass so let that sink in for a minute furthermore if you're down in the normal range let's say you're producing you know 450 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone a 40 percent increase over that in just fluctuations is still going to put you no higher than 600 uh, 650 nanograms per deciliter that's not going to equate to pounds of muscle on you every year people don't understand that the amount of testosterone that guys are using or gaining a lot of muscle from it is, is several times what the body produces naturally. Just like that study that I linked you guys uh, the other day about all this, uh, the highest dose that they ran in the study was actually four times what like a 20 year old male produces naturally. And uh, so that's a whole nother topic. But uh, the problem is that it's not enough to see a significant difference and it's just transient fluctuations. But the thing is, since some studies show no increase, it's fair to say there's something else going on. There's some bias going on with the few studies that do show a boost simply because it would be replicatable. If something boosted testosterone in everyone, you wouldn't see 10 set of test subjects in one study who show a boost and then no one in two other studies done by different researchers. So if you have two other studies that don't show any increase, there's something fishy going on. So you've got to watch that with supplements and some of these things that people are out there uh, trying to market. You need to see consistent studies across the board, not just one. And in this case, things like DDAA are going to be a ripoff there. It's simply unlikely to help you. And so overall, most of these supplements don't work. Same with tribulus. Tribulus hasn't been confirmed in studies to <laughs> boost testosterone to any significant amount. That's going to help you gain muscle, lose fat, things like that. All right, next up's gonna be through your diet. This one's a little more tricky. The, the thing is, yes, your diet can to some extent boost testosterone levels or lower testosterone levels, but again, some of it is very transient. I've seen data going back 15 years when I first started reaching this, and no, guys, I don't have an internet link. The internet, is it, it existed today, didn't exist back then. So we didn't have all these libraries of studies and stuff I read at an actual university library, but like a study from over 15 years ago that showed uh, when people consume soy or foods with phytoestrogens or testosterone levels dropped just slightly for the next hour or two. And when they ate red meat in another study, they saw boosts of up to 25% for the next hour. And while that's well and good and interesting, again, small boosts, small reductions in transient fluctuations are really unlikely to 
see any significant change in your body composition. It, it, we're talking tit for tat at this point. Now, the thing is, we do know that there are a couple of things that you can do to dramatically reduce your testosterone uh, levels with your dietary approach, and that's going to be consuming a diet that's way too low in fat, in particular, you're not getting your essential fatty acids. So you'll see a few guys like on YouTube, like Jeff Side or whatever, recommending to guys that they cut down to 30 grams or 25 grams of fat a day while cutting, because that's what he does. I can assure you that no person who is natty and not on any drugs is going to get away with that for any length of time without seeing their testosterone levels plummet, particularly when in a caloric deficit. And that's your other big kicker there. So a prolonged caloric deficit, particularly with a low fat diet, will plummet your testosterone levels. Also dieting down too lean will do the same. For most men, if you go under about 10% body fat through your diet, cardio, everything else, your testosterone levels will start to reduce. A few genetically elite people can get to 8 or 9% without any problems like that, but you need to understand that they're a minority of people and therefore they're not particularly worth addressing to a larger audience. You know, and again, it's not really worth worrying about because of that. You're talking at most 10% of people. So for most guys, even dropping under 10% body fat will lower them. So can your diet boost your testosterone to any meaningful uh, degree? Yes, absolutely. It can do so by restoring dietary deficiency. And the thing to also remember, some people think that zinc would be a dietary deficiency there. No, not necessarily. Most of you guys are not deficient in zinc unless you're maybe a vegan or something. Uh, most people who are consuming any significant amount of meat are getting more than enough zinc. And we know that zinc deficiency has been linked to reduced testosterone, but that has also spawned people producing another supplement, zinc-based supplements like ZMA to boost testosterone. Again, not consistent in the studies, and you need to realize that supplementing zinc on your diet if you're already getting a significant amount, can lead to both toxicity, so it can be dangerous to you, and consuming too much of it can actually block your absorption of copper, which will cause you other problems because you'll then develop a copper deficiency. So no, you shouldn't be supplementing zinc. You need to just eat a, a balanced diet of whole foods. But yeah, dietary deficiencies can absolutely lower it. And so restoring your diet, getting more fat in, a little more saturated fat, a little more omega-3 fats, because again, particularly essential fatty acid deficiencies are going to contribute to lower testosterone. That might be the one thing that you could supplement in if your diet has been too low in fat for a while would be like omega-3 fatty acid supplements, EPA, DHA. Uh, things like that. And once you increase your fat intake, no, you shouldn't need to supplement like a, an omega-6 because you'll get more than enough of it through your diet, through normal whole, whole foods. So you shouldn't need to worry about supplementing omega-6 then. But again, if, if your diet has caused it, uh, omega-3 fatty acids can very much potentially help you there, but they're not necessary automatically to do that. Again, only if your diet has been deficient. And that's always the key thing. So any change in diet that boosts testosterone production is generally as a result of a deficiency. You dieting down too lean, too much caloric restriction, too large of caloric restriction, or too long of one and dietary and fat deficiencies that cause it. It's not that the new diet necessarily boosts testosterone. It's not going to push you way up above what your body would produce normally. It's just putting you back to being healthy again. So diet can be hit or miss. It really depends on if you've created a deficiency or not that needs to be restored. But if you have, then absolutely, yes, uh, diet can help you there. All right, next up is going to be lifting weights. Again, this one is a little tricky. It's a little more complicated because we do know that lifting weights boost testosterone levels, uh, particularly lifting fairly heavy, moderately heavy to very heavy will tend to make your body produce more testosterone. But again, it can be transient. Now, over time, if you lift weights enough, it might help your overall level stay a little higher. But again, we're restoring back to a normal healthy range. We're not, you're not going to lift weights and get a big spike in testosterone that's going to give you massive amounts of gains in muscle mass. And the other thing to look at, there have been multiple studies done on this. We have meta-analysis done on this. I think I talked about it on the, the other channel a couple of years back. Of The most recent meta-analysis showed that transient spikes in testosterone post-workout and the amount that you produce is absolutely not correlated to gains in muscle mass. There, there wasn't a statistically significant correlation. So even if you pick the workout style that's going to boost your testosterone the most, the actual testosterone boost itself, the amount of it is not correlated in any way to your muscle gains. So while weightlifting is very healthy and weightlifting itself will help you gain muscle, don't rely on it to assume that you're going to boost testosterone. Again, unless you being really sedentary and obese and things has lowered it to some extent and the weightlifting helps shift your body composition to restore normal hormone balance. 
Now that brings us to the next thing. What about being too fat? Because we know being too lean reduces testosterone. Can being too fat reduce testosterone? Yes, but it will not do it as much as being too lean. Uh, being too fat will tend to lower testosterone, not because it's going to lower production per se, because these people are generally eating a lot of fat. If you're not eating a lot of fat in your diet, odds are you're not going to be very fat because humans don't really store carbohydrates or protein to any large degree as body fat, but everyone consumes some fat. So unless you're consuming a fat deficient diet, you're consuming a fair amount of fat if you're obese. You have to by default. So that being said, what is it about being obese that causes it? It simply allows, through the aromatase enzyme, it allows more of your testosterone to be converted to estrogen. However, are we talking about massive amounts? No, you might only lose 5% of your total testosterone as a result of being obese. But, again, if your goal, if you're trying to maximize your testosterone production for whatever reason, dropping down to the healthy body fat range for men might boost your testosterone by 5%. Uh, purely through a reduced amount of uh, aromatase activity in your adipose tissue. So, you know, if you're over 20% body fat as a male, if you're up at 25 or 30% and you want more testosterone, dieting down to 20% or lower body fat will probably help you. Now, will your testosterone automatically go up? No, it may go down as a result of your diet, depending on what diet methods you use and how fast. Your testosterone may actually go down during the dieting process, but once you get there and you stabilize, it will go back up, again, through reduced aromatase activity. All right, up next is something that's been all over bodybuilding forums. It's a bit controversial, and that's the whole no fap movement. And a lot of guys are trying to attribute the, the no fap thing, which means they don't masturbate. They don't masturbate to porn for very long extended periods of time in the hope of boosting their testosterone to make more gains. Now, while this is, has some certainly strong psychological components, the real benefits that guys are getting from the no fat movement has nothing to do with their testosterone. No matter what they think, I'm sorry, the science doesn't support this. It's not how the body works on this. The no fat movement is helping guys because by looking at less porn, they might actually be forced to interact meaningfully with real women. That's And it's gonna force them to boost their confidence because they're going to have to interact uh, with women and they're more likely to approach women if they're not masturbating to pornography every day. And there's also the factor that we know that porn addiction has been shown in studies for a decently high percentage of men to actually reduce their ability to perform well in bed. They tend to sometimes not be able to get an erection or not be able to maintain an erection for more than a couple minutes once they're with a real female, once a, a man becomes addicted to pornography. So there's your issue there. But the pornography itself, no, it doesn't lower testosterone. We're gonna cover that later in the psychological factors. It can be quite the opposite. And the abstaining from ejaculating in no way reduces testosterone. Uh, actually, the truth is uh, ejaculating frequently and being higher sex seems to, over time, actually slightly boost your total testosterone production. What happens immediately post uh, ejaculation, most men see a drop in testosterone level. That's true. They see some, their hormones shift around, their prolactin goes up, things like that. However, a couple hours later, they actually, you remember your body tries to maintain a state of homeostasis and balance. So that reduction is then followed later by a spike in testosterone. So it all balances out, but the, there is some evidence that being hypersexed might uh, boost testosterone to, to some extent. So next we need to cover the psychological factors. And that's something that Jamie Lewis uh, on the Chaos and Pain blog harped on a lot. I used to read about this a few years back, maybe four or five years ago. He was writing about this a lot of what he felt for guys who wanted to remain natural, that their whole lifestyle needed to revolve around the psychological factors uh, that can boost or lower testosterone. And he did talk about the hypersex thing, and he also pointed out that uh, watching violent pornography, abusive pornography in men has been shown to have the highest increase on testosterone production while watching it. But again, you're talking about transient fluctuations, small amounts, and so to do some of these things that he would talk about, these are things that you would need to do multiple times a day, every day, seven days a week to try to keep spiking your testosterone levels in the hopes of gaining an extra half a pound of muscle in a year. You're not going to see massive gains because you're not getting to pharmaceutically enhanced grade level testosterone here. You're just trying to spike your levels. Now, a lot of the psychological factors that, that he talked about were alpha male behavior, alpha male activity, uh, violence, things like that. There are studies that show that anytime a male touches or picks up a weapon, their testosterone levels spike. 
any time that you win at anything, your testosterone levels go up and your loser's testosterone levels go down. It doesn't matter whether it's a sporting event, an arm wrestling match, or even a checkers game or a card game. The winner's testosterone always spikes and the loser's testosterone always reduces. And it's not just true for uh, that, it's for things that you engage in and group efforts or that you support. If you're watching and rooting for a team in a team sport and your team wins, your testosterone level spikes shortly for an hour or so. And if your team loses, your testosterone levels dip. If your candidate in an election when the winning is announced uh, wins, your testosterone levels go up. And I saw at least uh, one study years back that <laughs> showed it to could last for up to 24 hours. And if your candidate loses, they saw like a 20 to 30% reduction in testosterone production for like the next day in, in the men whose candidate lost an election. So winning and losing actually affects testosterone production. Observing violent behavior, observing uh, any sort of hardcore sex or engaging in any sort of, of rough sex or things like that can absolutely boost testosterone levels in studies. Touching a weapon can boost testosterone levels. However, touching things like a baby, touching a small child will actually reduce your testosterone levels. And there's a, an evolutionary reason behind all of that. And part of that is believed to be it's the same reason that men's testosterone levels go down when their wife is pregnant. Their, their partner who they love is actually pregnant. Men's testosterone levels tend to go down. And that's because evolutionary we need men to stop if we're going to survive as a species usually a man who's going to provide for that child and take care of it and protect it and provide food for it needs to not be running around chasing other women and trying to get into as many physical conflicts as he can through the increased aggression and not be out chasing ass he needs to be at there protecting his pregnant woman he needs to be there for the new baby so again touching a baby will lower your testosterone production and it's a there's a very strong evolutionary reasons for that but the question becomes are those things significant to your gains no they're little transient amounts that might affect your behavior to a small extent but again we're talking about small shifts that are very unlikely to meaningfully impact your gains in the gym so again are they worth worrying about to a large extent probably not if someone wanted to absolutely be the best drug-free lifter or bodybuilder they possibly could to get a one percent edge they could live their entire life focused around all of these various psychological factors in the hopes of gleaning a small advantage but outside of that it's probably not going to make enough of a difference to really make a difference and you could really obsess over these things with uh, no results and if someone is that obsessed with it and it's that important that they're willing to change your entire day-to-day -day life around it I don't know why they're staying natty anyways because they, they clearly don't desire to be natty they're busy trying to boost their anabolic hormones the easiest and most straightforward way to do that is the direct route uh, with a drug so coming to drugs let's discuss the drugs themselves that boost testosterone production and why they're not always an option uh, number one on that list is going to be things like uh, CIRM selective estrogen receptor modulators and AIs aromatase inhibitors actually do all boost testosterone production. This is why they're used by guys in PCT when they come off of cycles of, of anabolics. The problem with that is that even though they do it through different pathways and they both block estrogen through different pathways, CIRMs, because they block some of the estrogen receptors uh, in various tissue and they stimulate estrogen in others, and the AIs block uh, the aromatase enzyme, so it blocks conversion of testosterone to estrogen. They both block estrogen while uh, having an impact upon the brain and several of the glands there to cause you to produce more. The problem is that their blocks on estrogen seem to lower IGF-1. And while a lot of people and vegans and other people love to talk about IGF-1, the, the problem is IGF-1 is absolutely necessary for muscle growth. The lower your IGF-1 production in your muscle tissue, the less muscle you gain, the higher it is, the more muscle you gain. The primary pathway that anabolic steroids actually gain muscle mass on you, their primary pathway through the androgen receptor is that by them binding to the androgen receptors, it makes the muscle cell itself produce more IGF-1 inside of it. And so if you're taking one drug that boosts your testosterone to boost the IGF-1, but the other drug is reducing your IGF-1, what you could end up with is actually maybe just the same muscle mass, even though it's boosting your testosterone levels largely. Also, uh, it could lead to reduce because its impact on your IGF-1 could actually counter it enough and go in the other direction. So in some cases, these testosterone-boosting drugs may actually 
reduce your gains. And the other thing is particularly the ones like the AIs. AIs, because they lower estrogen too much, you could have a testosterone that's slightly above the normal range, but your estrogen drops way below the normal range. Estrogen in men is required for sex drive. It needs to be in a certain range for your sexual function to work and for you to have a proper sex drive and perform properly sexually. And so some of these things, by reducing estrogen too much, even though your test goes up, your sex drive may go down. Your sexual performance may go down. So this becomes potentially very problematic. Now, the other uh, drug that's commonly used for this would be HCG, which is eumechorionic gonadotrophin you run into a slightly different issue. Human chorionic gonadotrophin used for prolonged periods of time can suppress you even though it stimulates production, but it tends to stimulate your production of multiple hormones, including estrogen. So it might push your testosterone up out of the normal range, but it will also push your estrogen back out of the normal range. And then that forces you to go back and use like an aromatase inhibitor to block that estrogen. So you end up being on a stack of drugs that are more expensive, have more side effects than if someone had just used a low dose of testosterone. So we're really getting into this absurd uh, tit for tat at this point from people trying to use drugs like this to just avoid using testosterone itself. It becomes a really silly and a moot point at this point because the, your side effects will actually end up being higher and it costs more money and it would be more frequent injections and more pills required just trying to get the same effect. So at a certain point, trying to use other drugs to do this, really it becomes problematic as any sort of method to boost testosterone for your muscle mass or your sex drive or anything like that. All right, guys, but I think we covered all the basics here. I might do some continuation videos and cover a few more of these things. So hopefully you guys learned a few things from this and it answered a lot of your questions that you guys have. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.